Welcome to the Kerrville Bible Church Pastors Podcast, where we seek to encourage and equip you in your walk with Christ by exploring a variety of biblical and theological topics. Stay tuned to the end of the episode to learn how you can submit a question for us to answer on the podcast. Welcome back to the Kerrville Bible Church Pastors Podcast. My name is Toby Baxley. The band yeah. is back together And I am again. back from a two-month sabbatical, and uh, I'm glad to be back, and I'm glad to be here around this table with you brothers to uh, encourage Sporting maybe... facial hair. Yeah, it's called my sabbatical. <laughs> sabbatical? Yeah. I like that. Uh. Bernie, and, oh. Bernie and Jeff and Peterson, Bernie Page and Jeff Peterson have... Yeah, I saw. Yeah, all are bringing. You, they came back stepping with up. it. Men, came back men, uh, men. Why do you beards, look at me Chris, when you say men that? Men have beards. This is, <laughs> this is my beard. I mean, this is as good as it gets. You do kind of have a five o'clock shadow today. Uh, probably three yeah. days of yeah, three, three days, days of yeah. three days three days of five McKnight, o'clock shadow. The McKnight three men shadows. cannot yeah. grow facial hair. That's not my fault. Yeah. So uh, we're back. And the purpose of this podcast is really to answer the question, how was my sabbatical? And hopefully, uh, uh, if you have that question, you can listen, or you are listening, obviously, if you're, if you're hearing the sound of my voice, you are hearing <laughs> uh, the answer to that question. And if you have something that we didn't a- answer, uh, then you can ask that. Uh, but- I think we need to note that we are back a week early for the people. We are, be- yeah, we wanted to give the people what they yeah, want. You, people for you, the people. You, you sort of cut Mostly, your sabbatical slightly short, didn't you? Just for this. Uh, it was, it was eight full weeks, I think. Yeah. Because June had five, June had five months or five weeks. Yes. And I was here the first Sunday of June, um, because most, some of the band was not going to be here and I didn't want Garrett to start leading worship, you know, with, without his full kind of complement of helpers, um, and so, uh, so I was here the second of June, and then gone until this past Monday, the twenty ninth. Right. So he could be ready for Sunday, yeah, I, which I didn't, is August. You can't just show up I didn't on sh- Sunday morning. I well, I didn't want to show up Thursday <laughs> he could. He could. with that good. nothing. I know to he was, but he could. I could. Yeah, <laughs> I could. I would have showed up Thursday. So, if I already had have been Thursday. Here's, here's well, I, you don't have <laughs> nearly as much work to do as that. I do, Murray. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, I got so, so many responsibilities. Here's the first sabbatical question, because I'm just curious about this. Have you touched a guitar in eight weeks? Uh, yes, I did. Um, I did play my guitar a couple of times. Uh, not not very much, not uh, very extensively. Enough, enough that... So I, I was listening to your sermon on Sunday. I, I was w- actually watching another church on, on the big TV, and then I was watching KBC on my phone okay. uh, with it muted until, until this other church was done. And then I turned it up because I knew that you were going to make that presentation to, to Garrett, but I wasn't sure exactly when. Right. And so I, I heard the end of your sermon. And in the meantime, I was changing my guitar strings on, on the floor of my, uh, of my den. And, uh, and when I started to play, I was like, oh, that... That hurts. That actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. hurts. Yeah. But I had to change them because I hadn't played them in so long, and I hadn't changed my guitar strings in so long that they were feeling kind of gritty. Mm. And so it was. Okay. It was kind of. It was time. All right. <laughs> okay. So uh, if it's all Q and A, I think. I think uh, the starting point would just kind of be, uh, where did you go? What did you do during your sabbatical? I know okay. you did. I know of two trips, but maybe just kind of recap a bit of the places you went and yeah. what for. And Yeah. Well, Melissa wisely decided that uh, we need to get out of town as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we went up to East Texas. Her family has a little cabin on a tiny little lake outside of uh, Mineola, which is the town where we moved from. And so we stayed there uh, for a week. Um, and, uh, it's, it's right on the lake and the kids, uh, fished and we, uh, we went into Tyler a couple, a uh, couple of times. I've got a friend that is the music minister at first Baptist in Lindale. And, um, and so I went and met him for lunch and, uh, just caught up with him. And then I've got another friend who is the 
the worship and communications pastor for Bethel Bible Church in Tyler, uh, not affiliated with Bethel in California. Just I always have to make that little disclaimer. <laughs> but um, we had lunch, and he's actually on sabbatical as well. So we swapped stories, and he gave me some advice. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was good. And we vis- we actually visited on Sunday Bethel's downtown campus, uh, where Eric Barton is the pastor and Eric uh, mentioned Carson okay. McKnight and uh, misses him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, Eric's a great guy and a great preacher and we had a good time there. Uh, I, got, I got some, some ideas, some cu- communications ideas from that church when we were there um, that, that we're actually probably going to talk okay. about at lunch today. Okay. Um, and that was the trip where it was, it rained a lot, right? You were sending us It rained, uh, yeah, the first few rained. days. Yeah, it yeah. rained hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was like, we might get flooded in here. Um, <laughs> East Texas. Yeah, it was, it was very green, very lush, uh, sort of like it is here right now, but uh, even more so at the time. So uh, that was that. We came back and then Melissa went to a... Uh, pastor's wives conference in Jacksonville, Florida wow. with um, Stacy Smith, who is Bob, pastor Bob's uh, wife. That was, that's my old pastor from East Texas. Um, and uh, that's, that was at first Baptist Jacksonville. Um, she went with Tom Buck's wife, Jennifer, and oh, really? a few others oh, from wow. first Baptist Lindale. Um, and so had a, had a great time there. And then we were here through the, the marriage retreat and that was a that was a great blessing. Uh, Carrie was Carrie was great. Mm-hmm. So thanks, Scott, for bringing him to town. Um, and then right after that, we were here through that Sunday, and then took off for Colorado. Melissa has a friend that has a has a cabin on the Conejos River, just just west of uh, Antonito, Colorado, which is really a, a nothing little town, um, but is pretty. The house was pretty, and it was accessible to to different stuff. So we fished in the river, didn't catch anything. Um, but we went to the great sand dunes national park, uh, and, uh, the kids and and Melissa, I didn't do much sledding, but you can rent sleds and sled down the, the sand dunes. They're pretty big. The, the tallest sand dunes actually 798 feet tall. Whoa. Uh, I did not climb that. Uh, (laughs) I stayed at the one that was 40 feet tall, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the bunny slope. Yeah, the bunny slope. <laughs> the bunny slope. Uh, but uh, then there's a, there's a swimming pool in Hooper, Colorado. That is a, it's a, not a city pool. It's a little outside of town, but it's, it's part of this recreation area and RV park. And it's hot spring fed. So it was an interesting experience. There's no lifeguards. Um, it, it's not chlorinated because it's continual. It's, continual inflow and outflow of water they actually i guess dam up or turn off the inflow and they scrub down the the pool walls and everything once a week and then they refill it and, okay but you know when you go swimming here like at the olympic pool or the croc the the water temperature is 75 ish 75 80 degrees the air temperature is 100 well there it was completely opposite the the air temperature was 75 degrees and the water temperature was 100 degrees. Wow. 100. It was a crazy experience. <laughs> and uh, there, there was a therapy pool where they kept it at 107. Oh, wow. And Melissa said she, she spent a little bit of time in the therapy pool and then stood up and had to, mm-hmm. she was a little dizzy from <laughs> right. that. So, and they have some mm-hmm. pools that are actually hotter than that. Uh, but that was, a, that was a fun and crazy experience. But um <laughs> Anyway, uh, we spent about right out a week there. Um, we did get on some fish at a little uh, a little lake that they stock, uh, some little brown trout. Um, I caught more fish in one day, Murray, you'll like this, than I'd ever caught in my whole life my whole up to life. that point. <laughs> I th- and I think that was like seven or eight fish awesome. one, one day. <laughs> Pretty much every, we'd move around this little lake. It was, it was really like a pond. But every time I, the we'd move, every time I'd cast the first cast, I'd get a hit, bring in a fish, and then we'd fish there for a little bit, and I'd move again. First time, <laughs> boom. Um, but uh, uh, that so the kids really enjoyed that. That was when they really that when they first caught their fish. Man, I was praying that they would catch something because Cora was like, "I'm not leaving until I catch a fish." I was like, "Lord, please catch us! <laughs> please let her catch a fish. We've got to get out of here." 
it's starting to rain. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally she caught, I think she ended up catching two. Uh, but uh, we came back through uh, Amarillo and I uh, was able to have, we were able to have dinner with a good friend of mine from college and his wife, uh, who I credit actually for them being together right now. So I don't know if Michael and Grace are listening, but uh, I felt like I'm the, I was the matchmaker in that, uh, that relationship <laughs> and they're still together. So that's great. And uh, it was, a, that was just a great time. And we saw, uh, we saw Texas, the musical Texas, which is, which was special because that's where Melissa and I met in 1997 and uh it was just fun being back in canyon which is where i went to college uh at west texas a&m and fun fact uh me and drew thorne went to west texas a&m at the same time and we're there yeah we were there at the same time but wow. obviously never never crossed paths because he was he played football and i was in the music department and i had i went to one football game the whole time i was there so and he went to one music performance <laughs> <laughs> maybe and now y'all are your friends we're good friends yeah, yeah. We're good friends then cool so um and then uh got to have breakfast the day that we came back uh, with a a good buddy of mine from college that was one of my groomsmen um so got back on july 3rd celebrated melissa's birthday on the 4th and uh we were here we were here pretty much until we went to till Garrett and I went to the uh, Sovereign Grace Music Conference last week. Uh, it was a week ago today that we took off and went to Kentucky. That's and the next question. So yeah, tell us about the conference. The conference was great. You know, I've been to <clears throat> I've been to several conferences, been to Shepherds and and Coram Deo and the Sing the Getty Sing Conference uh, a few times, and uh, this this was up there. This was really. Uh, between, I told Melissa that I think, I think Sovereign Grace is my new conference. You know, they only do it, I think every other year. So, you know, you could still go to something, um, maybe Getty one year, but Getty, the Getty conference is so big. It's a Coliseum conference, you know, it's like right. T4G. It's right. very impersonal and, uh, and it's, it's a high level of production. Uh, and what I really loved about the, the Sovereign Grace conference was it was so accessible um it was it was right kind of in the right where we live you know it's mm -hmm. it's church ministry mm -hmm. the the people up on the platform leading they were just like they were just in regular clothes they weren't like super dressed they weren't in costumes or anything <laughs> right. they were even wearing their conference lanyards they were yeah. i mean even the bob and the yeah. singer bob coughlin and the singers on the Sovereign Grace team, they were just wearing their conference name tags and everything. It was so, right. it was just so normal. Down and I loved how, nor how yeah. normal it was. Yeah. But Bob strikes me as the kind of guy that's pretty laid back. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but the music is so good. The, their new album, it, it's, it was all based on, on J.I. Packer's Knowing God. Mm -hmm. It is their best album ever. Wow. The, the music, they did a full playthrough of their album. Wow. Uh, Thursday night that we were there and I was just like in tears the whole wow. time. It was amazing music, amazing songwriting. Um, and uh, it was really special that I got to go with Garrett, uh, you know, with him being him leading right. uh, through the summer. I thought this would be really encouraging for him. And, you know, I was just the, he said at, on Sunday morning that we sang until we couldn't sing anymore. Well, I, I did start feeling kind of bad Friday night this congestion and all that stuff. But part of the reason I couldn't sing on Sunday morning or on Saturday morning is just, I was just overwhelmed with the, just being there with him yeah. and uh, just how proud I am of him. Um, so it was special. That's great. The timing of that was perfect. That was uh, him having a taste of it and then getting to go and, and experience that with you guys together. And, you know, you yeah. handed the baton <laughs> off to him and now he's handed it back to you. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. He he told me he's like yeah. this will not be my last conference. So it, it kind of wet his appetite and and I, he's never really been much of a reader of like Christian nonfiction theology books, but he was asking me cuz they've got 10 of those runs a bookstore there and it wasn't very big. I mean, they didn't have your book, Scott, which I thought, what are y'all even, what are y'all even doing? If yeah, you right. don't have Scott's book. <laughs> I mean, you, call uh, yourself, even a bookstore. you call yourself a bookstore. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, How can you call yourself a bookstore if you don't have at least one of Scott Christensen's books? 
Um, but he was asking me for book recommendations. So that was cool. Uh, he's wanting to, wanting to get into some, some reading. All right, guys, throw, throw a question on him. So Toby, did you get a chance to write any songs or music? I, uh, I did not, I did not write any, any songs or music, but, uh, being at the Sovereign Grace, uh, conference really kind of whet my appetite for that again. again. Um, and Garrett and I were talking on the way home about, um, starting to maybe get a group together here at church of, of creatives to start collaborating and, um, bouncing ideas off of each other. I did have a couple of so, maybe solid song ideas, but nothing fleshed out yet. But, um, that's a cool concept with knowing God because that's such a classic Christian book. You know, it's just been been around for generations now. You know, right. uh, twenty five, thirty years. I don't know when it was originally published. So many people have read that book and been been impacted by it. You know, it's probably J. I. Packer's most famous, and he's a great writer just in general. And so, what a what a great concept. You know, yeah. to take something like that and and uh, let that be a springboard into into an album like you talked about. I look yeah. forward to, I guess we're going to sing some of those songs at some point, maybe. There's one that Garrett was like, we got to sing this right away. Um, I, I don't remember what the name of it is. It's the first song on the album. Okay. I think it's called Sing. But uh, great. It, it sort of asks a series of questions. Did you? Is there breath in your lungs this morning? You know, is your heart still beating? Then sing, mm. you know. And it's okay. a great, like, call to worship stand to your feet song all right yeah murray you got a question uh now that you're back and looking back over the last eight weeks would if you could what what would you change what would you do differently uh what would i change about the sabbatical yeah uh yeah. i don't know that i'd change anything i, I think i would probably try to i try to unplug faster uh i had a i had a bit of a difficult time unplugging it wasn't like I was constantly in touch with everybody and trying to keep my fingers on everything, but, uh, uh, just mentally unplugging. Uh, I, I did, you know, I talked through stuff with Garrett early on. Um, and then, uh, eventually like, I didn't know what was going on. Like, I didn't know Adam Strauss sang a couple weeks ago at church. I didn't even know that was happening. <laughs> and and I thought, good. well, that's, that's cool that I didn't know that. Uh, you, you found so. your traction because about two weeks in, I sent you a text question and yes. you shut me down. Yes, I mean, it was yes, just like, I did. No, hey, <laughs> hey can and you? I'm like, well, already then, hey, I'll figure it out myself. You send me one of those. Hey, can you? <laughs> hey, can you? Hey, can you? I was like, no, no. I'm on sabbatical. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. like fact, I, I even got reprimanded <laughs> by yeah. Chris one time by including. Toby in a, in a group text. And a group text. Like, like, leave him alone. It was, like, it was right after. It was right <laughs> it was after right I uh, yeah. rebuked him and said, no, I'm not going to do that. So, so you he can said do the it. rebuke to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, you can do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's what happened. So, so that's really one of the takeaways too, <laughs> yeah. is, uh, is that what I realized that is that I've been doing too much for too many people and, and at the detriment of my own ministry. And, okay. and it's things that people should, can and should be able to do for themselves. Okay. And so uh, I'll spend more time teaching somebody how to do something, but I think uh, the technology that we use is such that anybody can anybody can make a breeze form, anybody can shorten a link, or you know, there are a few. There are only a few people that have access to our websites, so there's there's only a few people that can do that. But right. for the most part, there's a lot that a lot of people lean on me for. Right, and <clears throat> part of it is that I. I I actually kind of relished it because it's a, it's a quick win. I called it, I was, I was really convicted a few weeks into my sabbatical that I had just been picking low hanging fruit. And uh, because it's a quick win, it's Mm. a quick kind of attaboy. What would we do without you, Toby? And like, (laughs) Oh man, that feels so good. But eventually I felt, I I told Melissa, I was like, I feel feel like my ministry has become a monster that I created. Mm. And so it's just become a, a monster of, of, urgent needs, but not important, not, you know, not important. It's important, but it's not, it's not the focus of what my ministries here are supposed to be. Right, right, right. Kind of the tyranny of the earth. Correct. Yeah. Right. And it, and it feeds right into where all of us need to be reminded of being equipping others, training others, delegating to others. And and you got to, I mean, your gift is, is your talent is music. Your gift is serving, you know, and and so I think that it just plays right into your giftedness of, oh, here's a way to serve somebody, here's a way to help, and you're just yeah. 
you don't you just immediately do that and right. so but yeah that's great to the detriment of oh, well there's other things i could be doing with this this time and right i think i think that's one of the primary reasons for sabbaticals is to uh you know, tear out the glass ceiling or, or open up opportunities for others. And then hopefully it, it kind of stays that way, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, so, yeah, well, that's, that's good. So I, my, I got a, a question related to Murray's question. Um, were your expectations met for the sabbatical? No. Um, but my expectations, I think were sinful. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you it was a bit of more? it was a bit of a rough adjustment. I, I actually so the Lord rebuked you yeah, for your I, full expectations. Yeah, my wife rebuked me for my sinful <laughs> expectations. God did it through you know because <laughs> because it was I I think what I had in mind was I'm going to have all this time to myself and you know Melissa told me she said at one point she said we need more of you during this time not less and so. That that was kind of a, you know, an eye opener for me. I was like, oh, okay, um, and and then so by the t- by the end of it, they had had enough of me that Wyatt, <laughs> that Wyatt was like, I- I'm glad you're going back to work. Yeah. They're, they're taking we a had, sabbatical from you. We now. had enough. Yeah. When do you go back we, again? <laughs> I want you to go back to work so your days off are more special. It's like, yeah, right, oh, whatever. That's a good, that's a good spin. <laughs> oh my! Did it go by fast? Slow, medium, what? How'd, uh, how'd you go I think it, it it went by fast once I once I settled into it, and I told people that you know I saw Heath and Lori at the at the at H E B like right not maybe ten days into it, mm-hmm. at, right after we got back from uh, from Mineola, and he said, "How's your sabbatical going?" I was like, "Man, I hate it. I I I'm this is terrible. I I don't want to do it anymore. I want to go back to work, but." That was, I was still not mentally unplugged. And once, once that happened and I, you know, my, my sabbatical enjoyment went up, the time went by a lot faster. And then, and then toward the end of it, it was like, I was almost, I was a little apprehensive about coming back to the office. You know, what all have I missed? How much am I going to have to catch up on? And I mean, thankfully it's, it wasn't much. Um, I feel like I'm pretty much caught up now. Um, now it's just kind of moving ahead and setting expectations for what's next we we haven't opened up pandora's box for you we we <laughs> wanted you to settle in a little <laughs> okay before, before we do that. Next, oh good i come yeah. next week <laughs> <laughs> is that is that a question <laughs> that a question oh my so how long did it take you to get into that groove of your sabbatical i think probably uh it 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 was until we went to colorado so like the last week of june wow. so it took it, it was quite a steep, steep curve to get there. Are you glad it's over? Am I glad the sabbatical's over? Yeah. Oh, I could I could use a few more weeks. <laughs> I, don't, I feel like I just squander them. You <laughs> so, squander. No, I I'm actually excited to be back. I, I was thinking while we were praying, I'm actually more excited about ministry now than I was on June first of 2016. Okay. Um, I, I'm I'm more excited about what's going on here at, at Kerrville Bible Church and and my ministry in particular than I was even when I started here. Uh, I think there was a lot of just kind of learning, learning how things work, and I kind of inherited some things. Uh, I inherited a choir, which I love, but I inherited the choir kind of as it was. And over the sabbatical, I was able to just push back and get a huge bird's eye view of everything. Mm -hmm. And I I feel like coming into this, this new season, if you will, I'm, I'm able to shape the ministry and the the music ministry in particular in, in the way that I feel like the Lord's, the Lord wants me to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's going to be something that's, that's kind of uniquely mine. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, mission accomplished then. That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's tremendous that, uh, to, the, what you just said, you really, you, you didn't communicate a lot, but you communicated once, uh, with us after the, uh, after the reveal of the catechism plan mm-hmm. and that sermon. And that really blessed me. And you just talked about how excited you were and that you were as tearful as I was in the, yeah. in, the, in the sermon and just excited about Wednesday nights. And, 
uh, and all of that. And that was a, that was a huge encouragement. Uh, cause you know, cause I don't even know, like I don't, every week I was like, where's, I'd say to Garrett, where's your dad this week? You know, is he gone somewhere? Is he live streaming something? Is he, you know, yeah. he, he sometimes would kind of have a in the know, maybe not. And right. so, you know, I had no idea if you're even, you know, even, uh, tuned in. So, yeah, we uh, watched, uh, weird. we live streamed KBC that, that Sunday, it was, what was, it was the 30th of June when you revealed the, that was the raising, uh, modern day Apollos, right? right, right. Um, we live streamed that one cause Antonito is in a church desert. There was, there was nothing that looked even remotely, uh, po- positive in that whole, that area. Um, we did all the searches, nine marks, Acts 29, TMS, you know, and there was nothing. Um, maybe we could have driven to Denver or something, but uh, <laughs> that's a long way to drive to church. Um, so we live streamed that and I live streamed the last two weeks of my sabbatical. I live streamed, um, uh, the village chapel in Nashville. Oh, okay. Garrett told me village and I was thinking Dallas and, uh, and but it didn't sound exactly the same. So yeah, Nashville the okay. village chapel uh, is where it's the Keith and Kristen Getty's home church there in Nashville. Okay. All right. But it's very, um, their music's pretty, pretty understated that they're, they're it's a big old building, um, just kind of a classic old brick building. Uh, it looks like it could be on the on the campus of Vanderbilt or something. Right. It's just one of those old old style buildings, but um, huge ceilings, uh, wood floors, a uh, low platform. the 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 platform is very I mean, maybe maybe like eight inches, but they they've got the best musicians in Nashville playing at this church, but they do not feature them. They're, they're in the corners. The, the pulpit area is completely clear and all the music happens on the sides. And, uh, these are fantastic. These are phenomenal musicians. If you get a chance to go see, look at their YouTube channel and their live stream, I sent the live stream to Luke Smith. I was like, this is like the, the prototype, uh, sound mix for a live stream. This is so good. Um, and it's a lot of what we do, a lot of hymns and, but they have no, their singers are on stools. They're not standing up, holding microphones. They're not moving around. They're just sitting there singing and it's just, it's phenomenal. Uh, I, I don't, they say they're non-denominational. I thought they were, I thought at one point they were like Anglican or something, but um, they claim to be non-denom. So I don't know, but it's, it was, it's encouraging. You went to some local churches. You don't need to name I them. Did. I don't. I don't think. But uh, impressions of local churches you you attended. Uh, I only went to, well, local. If local means area, yeah. I only went to three. I went to Christ Church, uh, and I'm always blessed there. Yeah. Uh, I love I love being there. Yeah. Carrie Thompson does a great job with the music, and and Billy Crane uh, gave a great message that I really needed to hear that morning. Good. And it was one that was kind of the impetus of. Man, your ministry has become a sinful obsession to you because you're you're just at it for the you know for the attaboys and so Billy, if you're listening, I know you are. <laughs> thanks for the rebuke. thanks for the thanks for the not. gentle rebuke. I know you're not. Uh, but uh, we went to Believers Fellowship. Uh, we've got some friends there, okay. and so that was uh, that was it was fun to catch up and and see what's going on there and um, and then uh, I I went by myself to, to Trinity church in Fredericksburg. Okay. Um, it's out east of town. We've, I've been, been there and visited before and I, I like their service a lot. I like how they organize it. Um, so, but it's, and they've got a huge, beautiful building out there, but I was, their congregation is really small. Other questions? Did you read anything amazing? Uh, outside, the, yeah. outside the Bible, yeah. Um, and I have to say, and this is not just—I'm not just blowing smoke, but really one of the best books I read over the sabbatical was Scott's book, "Defeating Evil." Defeating Evil. Wow. And I texted you, Scott, and I've—I've I've said to several people since then. I like a book like that has the tendency has has the potential to be very dry. But Scott, your writing is just wonderful. Um, Gosh, I don't know why I'm crying. (laughs) (laughs) 
because no evil crying. because evil has been defeated. <laughs> Amen. In, in but, life. Dude, your prose is yeah. so engaging. Yeah. Um, and it's just it was it was delightful to read. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's awesome. I read uh, God, Technology, and the Christian Life by Tony Reinke. That was a tome. I mean, not a tome. It's like 300 pages, but yeah. that's a big book for me. That's a lot for God, technology. and the- Yeah. <laughs> and it, it was, I, I wrote, I said, this could have been shorter. Yeah. Uh, uh, I started an audio book by Sproul, uh, the exegetical commentary on First and Second Peter, uh, which I love Sproul's writing. Uh, what really one of the best books I read was a, a book that is kind of, kind of hard to deal with but it's called departing in peace and i sent you guys a, a photo of it and it's it's biblical decision making for end of life issues so um oh. when people are on their deathbed when they're in the hospital in icu can't make decisions can't make decisions for themselves um do they have the proper things in place mm-hmm. from a from not only from a, a legal perspective as far as like your advanced directive your living will but do your caregivers, do your decision makers know what your heart is as far as biblical decision making? You know, you don't have to, you don't have to sustain your life as long as possible. Um, if you're, if you've got chronic illness, if you're permanently confused or permanently unconscious, you know, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to preserve your life, uh, artificially right. as long as possible. Right. And that was a really helpful book. I heard him on a podcast and I was like, I need to read that book. Mm-hmm. And so, um, that was a good one. <clears throat> okay. And then finished with, I finished like the night before I came back to work, I finished Truman's, uh, strange new world. Mm. And is, that, that the, is that the big one? That's the small one. That's the small the, one. The big one is the mm-hmm. rise and triumph that's of the right. modern self. Yes. Right. But, uh, but yeah, that was it. Okay. So mm-hmm. I read, I read every book that I intended to read though. Oh, so that's good. I got every, I got through my whole book list. That's good. All right, last question, and we'll go to we'll go to lunch. <clears throat> You've touched on it, but next up in our sabbatical train <clears throat> is the the great the inimitable great <clears throat> author here. He would be next up, um, great Scott. So, what is your advice for Scott and Murray? <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> as as. Well, Scott, Scott course. and Murray are in a different boat than I am because right. they don't have kids at home, or you know. They don't have little, little kids little at home, kids. Uh, but uh, get out of town. Uh, yeah, unplug as as much as you possibly can, and then more, as more much, than that, and as fast, right? And and as fast, just disappear, dis- disappear off the grid if you can. And it, it's almost like you have to pretend that you don't know. You don't, you don't, you've never heard of Kerrville Bible Church. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what's, what is this place? I've never heard of it before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, and I, th- I really think that your, your sabbatical goes well, the more, the less you're tied to, to what's going on. Mm-hmm. And that's hard. Cause I love it here. Right. I, I do. Right. I yeah. think that would be the hardest thing for me. I, I, I mean, church and ministry is my life. Yeah, it is. It's, it's right. my identity. <laughs> Um, and I know that's, I got a book for you, It's good Would and bad because I said, I got a book for you, Scott. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who I am? <laughs> Who am I? Um, uh, yeah. yeah. No, that was one of the things that hit me during mine. You guys yeah. will remember is like, wow, all of my exercise of my gifting is just set on the shelf. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, and there is a big part of our identity that is this thing. I actually got to the end of mine. It's like, Hey, it is. And I'm okay with it. Yeah. Uh, it won't be forever. You know, but this is what, yeah. this is my, this is in this season, that's the way things are. And, and I'm not confusing this with salvation or Christ or, you know, but yeah, that is the, it is a big, it is a big challenge. It's, it's good. It's good for us. I mean, it's good for our humility. It's good for everybody else around us. It's good to force people to do things that they would just depend on you to do, you know, and uh, open up opportunities for others. But yeah, like, you'll be up next year. You're 2025 and you're wow. 2026. Yeah. It was good so, for me not to be here to, Mm-hmm. No, yeah, you get past credit. Remember, it's just like the past credit. Yeah, Dude, for, I should have taken my sabbatical. Like, <laughs> well, but it's also the pecking order of when you got oh, here. Oh. So, oh, and yeah, we'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So get away, cool. get, unplug as fast as you can, as much as you can. Get real, out of town get if out you of can. Town. Get out of town because that helps you unplug much of it as possible. Yeah, that's good.
Great report, Toby. Thank you. And yeah. I'm sure people Thanks will be asking that. you other questions, but hopefully this this uh, satisfies an appetite that's out there and curiosity. Everybody's will, will certainly want to know how it went for you. And that was, uh, uh, I feel like you did a way better job than I did uh, whenever that was last time. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you started it. You get to end it. Or, okay. Or would you like somebody else to end it? No, somebody else pray. Okay. I nominate Scott. <laughs> I nominate Scott. Uh, Scott. <laughs> right. Third. It Three was, to one. It's all providential. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks, Lord, uh, for the ministry of Kerrville Bible Church and the privilege that you have given each of us uh, to serve this body of believers. And we want to especially thank you for, for Toby Baxley, uh, for bringing he and Melissa and his family to our, our church body. And uh, Lord, they have had a tremendous impact on the life of our church and the ministry Lord, that goes on here, and uh, Lord, we're, we're thankful that the elders of this church have decided the importance of, of providing uh, full-time paid pastors and elders, Lord, to, to have these, these sabbaticals, Lord, they're so, they're so fruitful and beneficial, Lord, and so we're grateful for the time that, that Toby had to um, use this time, Lord, just to recharge, to, to, to rethink Lord, about ministry and uh, what that means for him and his family and for this church. And so, Lord, we we thank you for the great spiritual benefit that that had not only for him, Lord, but we know it will be a great benefit to our church body as well in in many tangible and intangible ways. And so, Lord, thank you for this this opportunity to hear uh, how that went for him and uh, pray that we'll bring blessing continued blessing to him all this in Christ's name Amen. Amen Thanks for listening to the Kerrville Bible Church Pastors Podcast We want to be a resource for you and answer the biblical, theological or pastoral questions that you may have Send them to us via email at questions at kerrvillebiblechurch.org or leave us a text or voicemail at 830-321-0349 